Hello, I'm Carson Murray, and today I'm going to show you how I made these abstract paintings. It was really simple, the only skill required was patience, and I didn't actually use very much of it. So to start, pick your canvases. I went with two gallery wrapped 12x12s 12 12 that I got for cheap from Ross. They are pre-primed. And now seems like a good time to mention that I didn't realize that the camera didn't do audio at all and I was nervous so I did talk the entire time I was working on these projects. Oops. For canvases, mine were dirty and a bit dented. Not necessarily Ross's fault. It's been pretty crazy here so I think it's probably my fault. <laughs> but it just seemed nice to tell you if yours are a little messy, don't worry about it. You want to cover any dirty areas up with paint and dents up with glitter. As for the materials, I used craft paints on this project. I used the ones that, I used these ones in particular because I already had them on hand and I'd already bought the color Wild Iris to match the curtains in this room. So just use whatever colors work for you. If you use a heavy body artist pigment, I would thin it a fair amount to get the same results. If not, it'll end up a little bit more impasto. And you would also need a palette knife. I use a water sprayer at one point because I live in Phoenix and it's really dry here. And I use Mod Podge to finish, again, because we have it on hand. And I also use Mod Podge to do the glitter step, which you'll see later on. The technique or method that I went with is just dots. You put the dots of color on that you want along the edge and or the middle and then you take a palette knife and you kind of scrape it out in thin lines. I'll be tackling two designs today, one that goes from the middle and one that starts from the outsides working in. And the majority of the work is done right away. This is my water sprayer. I'm just misting everything here to help the paint spread a little bit more evenly. Like I said, I live here in Phoenix and it's very dry. So when you initially spread the dots, a lot of the blending work gets done just right off the bat. You don't even have to think about it. And then I like to turn my knife onto the flat edge, like you see here, or the, the thin edge, like, I, like you can see, and uh, make the scrapes the little fingers. It's actually best not to leave your dots on too long, like I do here. The edge is dried out and then it doesn't blend as nicely. And I did try to combat this problem with more water with my sprayer, but it just it doesn't work as well. And this is a lesson I learned here on this project actually, so I'm learning something new every day still. <laughs> But it does look cooler for the internet, obviously. Rotate your knife when you're doing the mirror reflection. 
so much battery. <laughs> I really appreciate it. I did make several beginner mistakes like this, but it doesn't matter. I'm learning and I tried. Oh, we're back with the gold. Yes. So you've done your like 3000 lines and you waited to let your canvas dry completely 100% and it will mess up and smear if you don't It'll like pick up the paint from underneath. Now you can start with your gold, the same method as before. Just put some on and kind of spread it around. And I did need to go back to take the gold a little bit more seriously. I went way too light for my original vision for the first pass, so I did go back and I went a little bit more ham, really. <laughs> I put it on a lot more thickly. I think it really benefited from it, honestly. Oh, and the middle, the very middle of the gold will get covered by all of the glitter. So it doesn't actually matter too much that we had the problem with the paint drying here in the middle. It'll all get covered up and if you have problems in the middle of yours, don't worry about it. What we're really focusing here on is going to be like the fingers, the little edges that stick out. That's what we want to make look very pretty right now. tried out sort of two different looks here, one a little bit more blunt than the other, obviously. I did end up liking the purple and gray one from the edges a little bit more in the end, but I do like them both. time. So this was my first time using this method so you can see my mixing here. I'm just watering down Mod Podge. I had some that was already watery and I'm just mixing it with some that wasn't until I get a consistency that I think will work really well for me. You could also use any kind of regular school glue here like an Elmer's or something. Again, just watered down until it is a consistency that you think will spread nicely for you. And then I added about a tablespoon of gold glitter here. I went with very fine craft glitter. I did consider using a gold hollow, but I thought that the yellow tones would actually look better on this project, so I stuck with regular gold. And as you can see, we're using basically the same method. Pour it on and scrape it out. Except you can really just go as hard as you want. You can put as much on as you want. Go really thickly and especially if you pour it right in the middle, it's much easier to spread out. The Mod Pod Mod Podge doesn't dry quite as quickly. And I really liked working with the Mod Podge in comparison to dry glitter over wet glue lines because this makes like no mess at all and 
I was able to get actually very, very sharp lines, and you can see them sort of here, the white, they dry clear, and they look really, really nice. so beautiful that's it make sure you let everything dry completely in between the stages i finish with just two coats of mod podge since i don't expect these to last more than two years or so just because i don't expect the curtains to stay in the house for more than two years or so so thankful to the costume community. The CocoVid event that they put on gave me so much encouragement to just try to do the thing, try to be a beginner and start. It doesn't matter. It's okay if you're not perfect. It's fine. So I did and I mean I say I. We I had a lot of help and I'm incredibly thankful. So thank you so much. That's it. I'll leave a like for Mr. Kidders, I guess, and I will see you guys next time.